So this started 20 years ago, in fact, 20 years ago from now. And um, I was working for Job van der Ende Theater Productions, um, and we were in New York for a production called Cyrano the Musical. And that musical was a disaster. The, Engl the American press uh, ripped it to pieces. And um, I was walking Times Square and watching the big billboard of Cyrano, and I thought to myself, what Dutch show could work? here in the United States, with all those patriotism and everything. And I thought, well, Soldier of Orange, the musical. And 10 years later, my brother, who lives in Atlanta, in Georgia, coincidentally ran into Eric Haswolf Rolfsema, the real Soldier of Orange. And my brother was, he called me up, he rang me up and he said, um, I'm going to meet your hero. And I said, hero, what, what hero? I don't have a hero. He said, yes, you have one hero, and he's Eric Hauswolf, and I'm going to meet him tomorrow. Okay, well, get me the rights, I said to my brother, get me the rights of his book so I can turn his book into musical theater. And the next day, my brother rang me again, and he said, do you have a pen? I have an email address for you here, and it's the most beautiful email address you'll ever hear. Um, Eric was living on Hawaii, and his email was oranje.aloha.net. <laughs> <laughs> so I emailed Eric, and um, he responded well to it. Um, and that is now nine years ago. Nine years ago since um, the dream began. And um, dreams are something which you should follow, of course, and especially when they come up to you like coincidence. Um, and that's what I did. Um, but also I think that dreams should content some reality or maybe some true content like Eric's story. And uh, otherwise the, the dream will burst like a bubble before you even know um, how the dream could have ended. And let me tell you about bubbles, especially in showbiz, we use a lot of bubbles. And this bottle contains the best champagne I have ever tasted. The tiny merry bubbles jump into your mouth and it really makes you very, very happy when you drink it. And um, I think that that's the way success tastes like. And luckily I know how fluid success is, because you grab the bottle, you pour it, you take a zip, you taste, you swallow, and hey, it's gone. So always be careful with the thing you try to do. And uh, I think I best explain my feelings or my better said, my ambitions, by using one of the quotes of um, the man whose story we're telling every night in a theater um, by, from Eric Hazel of Roosma. This is from an interview I had with him seven years ago. Oh, uh, Ik werd uh, uh, nogal voortgedreven uh, om dingen te bereiken, om dingen te zien, om uh, een ander leven te leiden dan anderen. Dat had ik al vrij vroeg te pakken. Uh, je beoordeelt de situatie en dan doe je wat je, wat je, denkt, dat je, wat je denkt dat je doen moet. Dus met andere woorden, als jou iets naast overkomt en je reageert er goed op, dan kan je er nog heel wat van maken. Is, in fact, uh, nothing bad happened to me during my childhood, what, what Aaron is referring to. Uh, in fact, I had a very happy youth. Uh, my father taught me the power of positive thinking. Um, my mother was strong, still is strong, well, a little less, she's 84, um, and very sweet, and besides that, she's the best Indonesian cook ever. And, um, but although that, they had pretty severe times during the Second World War. Um, my mother was interned in a Japanese camp in the Dutch Indies, and my father lost a brother in the resistance in Groningen. So my childhood must have been much better than theirs. But still, I think I got a sense of their experience, experience in the way they raised me. 
Um, and uh, it's, it's not a coincidence that I'm making a theater play out of something from the Second World War. And um, that's also why I admire uh, Eric Haselhoff so much, because his uh, pursuit to the quality of life, besides everything he encountered in it. And, um, Eric had his ambitions, and, and I was thinking, well, well what are mine? And my, I, I always had three ambitions. Uh, I wanted to write a novel, still to do. I wanted to have my own restaurant, preferably as a chef. And I wanted to make a musical. Not just any musical, I wanted to make Soldier of Orange the musical. I don't know why, um, and I'm trying to explain it while talking to you. Um, mainly what I wanted to do also is to bring a little rock and roll, or at least the philosophy of rock and roll, into musical theater. And get out of the path uh, and the roots uh, a musical has in to, uh, for the last decades, um, with all the glossy and pink and everything you... Well, what, what I hate, at least. And the, the one thing to try to succeed with musical here in Holland is to try to be contrary, because there are so many other producers who already make a lot of other beautiful stuff. Um, so, if this is it, if this is my sense of achievement in life, this soldier of orange, well, then, then that's the way it is. And I'll try to find one of that other goals to fulfill, one of that other dreams, that novel, that restaurant, maybe. But, on the other hand, is it really that easy? Of course I want to do the trick again. I want to try to find another story which has the same nice content where all those people come to see in our theater. And um, so one big success gives really rise to the challenge and ambition to do it all over again. And um, I think uh, uh, that success is dangerous. And I'll try to explain that by two quotes of two great entrepreneurs. The first one is from Andrew Grove, the founder of Intel, who said, success breeds complacency, and complacency, complacency breeds failure, and only the paranoid survive. And his good friend, Lou Gerstner, the CEO of IBM, he said, the more successful enterprises are, the more they try to duplicate. They're thinking, how can we continue to do what we've done in the past without understanding? That what made them successful is to take risks, to change and to adapt and to be responsive. And so, in a second, success breeds its own failure. You think about the wonderful expression that Andy Grove used, just read, um, it's only the paranoid that survive. What Andy's saying is you can never be comfortable with your success. You've got to be paranoid, you're going to lose it. Now, and here's the real pro problem. I'm not paranoid at all. So, I hired some people who are, and I have some great colleagues who are very, very paranoid. Um, and um, uh, I don't think I'll mourn if I lose the success. I don't think um, that um, I will... I, I, I think I'll just clean up the mess and, and start something else. But on the, other, on, on the other hand, what I just said, success really makes you crave for more. And... Um, so I think I have to go back to the big night where that success all started and that the, the, the evening where uh, we all worked for, so for, for seven years and finally there was opening night on October 30, 2010, almost two years ago. And it was a beautiful night and the show went very well and everybody was very enthusiastic. And um, I was host to many very charming and important people, e even Her Majesty the Queen was there, talking about dreams. That was a dream for me as well. Um, and, um, and everybody really liked the show. And um, after the show, um, after saying goodbye to the royals, um, I returned to the cast and crew who were still on stage talking to the press. And to get there, I had to first walk through the front of house, through a very crowded front of house. And... Um, Suddenly, I found myself running through uh, the, the, the gray tunnel, which leads into our auditorium. And I was running, and my head was bursting from emotions and impressions and everything. And I was jumping high up, and I said, yes! I was all alone. And then the next thing I know, I ran into this imaginary wall. So what, now what's next? Everything worked out. Everything was great. Everything was fine. What do I have to do next to live up to this success, what it was uh, supposed to, to going to be. 
And um, so at that moment, I thought, I, I don't really have to do it. I mean, I can quit after this, can't I? I can do something else. But on the other hand, success makes you crave for more. And uh, maybe I have to accept the challenge of trying to do this trick once more. I have an obligation to the 150 people who work in our theater every night. I have an obligation maybe to myself, to uh, maybe to even to the audience, to try to make something they liked uh, as, as, as well as, as all those others. So coming back to those quotes of Grove and Gerstner, I think what you can learn of it is that don't try to copy your success, but think of the way how you got there. What path did you take to uh, come up with that success? How did you bring that idea to the success it is? And um, so I, I think I, that's, that's the moment that I got back to uh, how, how did I get there. And I, the, 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 that was mainly the content. It was Eric's story. It started all with the story. And um, I... Try to explain that by a quote of Eric. De oorlog, verhuisd van een persoonlijk tragedie voor een hoop mensen, verhuisd hij naar een geschiedenisboek. Ik geloof daarom dat je hier een musical van maakt, waar je al deze emoties waar ik het over heb probeert in muziek te brengen. En dat lukt je een beetje, eh, dat je niet alleen iets leuks doet, maar je doet ook iets nobels aan, eh, aan de Nederlandse geschiedenis, aan de gedachten over de oorlog. Um, as Eric just said, we have to live up with this story to um, keep the memory alive, to do something with the remembrance. That's what we want to do for the future as well. So we want to bring stories to life that, um, that really become part of your, of your heart. And uh, that's, that's what made me think of Soldier of Orange in the first place. That and, of course, the megalomania of uh, London and New York, which I told you about in the beginning. Um, Working with Eric was great, and uh, it's a man I admire very, very much. And I think if you lose your ability for admiration, you have to think of, am I doing the right thing in life now? Maybe I have to quit what I'm doing and do something new in which I can find that feeling of admiration again. Eric said this, in life of everybody, there are moments where he says to himself, well, that's not possible, we can't let that go and then he does something. I don't think I need to say more. Thank you very much.